scenario is pretty extreme. And for those wondering how the ending could have been improved, join me over at pick number five. Number five. Perchance to dream. This is if the Over the Edge episode was fully realized, though taking sort of an opposite approach. Bruce Wayne wakes up one morning and finds that everything in his life has actually changed for the best. His parents are alive, he's marrying the woman he loves, and there's even somebody else who's doing the job of Batman. Selina, does the name Catwoman ring a bell? Bruce, you're beginning to worry me. What's this all about? He can't understand why, and even though everything is just how he's always wanted it, and even at one point starts to accept it, there's still a twinge of darkness that won't let him leave it alone. No. You're a lie. It's all a lie! Is it madness breaking through sanity, or sanity breaking through madness? Questions keep knocking back and forth in his head until it builds up to the ultimate showdown. Bruce Wayne versus his alter ego, Batman. You're not well, Mr. Wayne. You need professional help. Liar! The way he finds out that everything isn't as it seems is clever, but I don't know, I still sort of question it. Watch the episode to see what I'm talking about. But still, that's not what makes it good, though. What makes it good is not only his longing to lead a normal life and his actual enjoyment of it for a little while, but finding out just who is behind all this and how it's being kept going. In fact, if you listen to the musical theme, the answer is actually given to you very early on. Little touches like that are great, and it's nice to see what Bruce Wayne's life would have been like had it not been for that one tragic night. It builds up the sadness and brings on the darkness. It's a dream that could never be, and even harder to let go. Number four. Heart of Ice. Much like how the show created Harley Quinn, they also recreated Mr. Freeze giving him a very different and much darker backstory. Freeze in this version was originally a scientist, trying to find a cure for his deathly ill wife who he has cryogenically frozen to save her. Once he goes over budget though, his boss comes in to shut the experiment down, dooming his chances of ever seeing her again. It's your only chance! This is my assignment! No! Oh! Freeze tries to fight them off, but gets knocked into a bunch of various chemicals that do all those creative things that a bunch of various chemicals do. In this case, make it impossible for him to live without being at sub-zero temperatures. It would move me to tears if I still had tears to shed. Thus, that's where the free suit comes from, and that's where his cold outlook on the world originates. I can only beg your forgiveness and pray you'll hear me somehow. Some place where a warm hand waits for mine. The backstory was so good that now everybody uses it. The comics, the graphic novels, the TV shows. Even Joe Schumacher, to his credit, knew how powerful the image of a frozen loved one looked. But that still doesn't excuse that, which I'll never... Never leave the cave without it. Don't tempt me, Clooney. The imagery this episode creates is always memorable and often duplicated. It's the kind of surreal imagery people love to use in Batman stories. And this is the episode that started it all. It made Freeze more than just a guy with a cool gun. It made him a Shakespearean tragedy. The music as well adds to the macabre wonder that the episode creates. The atmosphere in every respect is so heavy that the lines practically write themselves. To never again walk on a summer's day with a hot wind in your face and a warm hand to hold. Oh yes, I'd kill for that. A much better alternative than... Freeze well! That! Number three, Trial. This episode brings up something that a lot of Batman fans have brought up for a while. With criminals like the Joker, Two-Face, and Clayface, is Batman doing more harm than he is good? Half the time it seems like he's almost created these villains. Does it turn out all along that Batman is actually the cause of the majority of misery in Gotham City? Well, all the famous villains get together to find out. They take over Arkham Asylum, capture Batman, and force the new district attorney to represent him. The only downside is... Wait, those were all downsides. The district attorney thinks Batman is just as guilty as the rest of them. 
Not only does Batman create these so-called super criminals, he takes it upon himself to be their judge and jury with no regard for the legal system. These are actually very good points. They're issues that have haunted what Batman as well as what any other superhero does for a long time. With the Joker as judge and Two-Face as the prosecution, the biggest gathering of villains in the show's history come together to see if they've been wronged by Batman's vigilantism. I suppose you, like your friends, claim that Batman drove you to be a criminal? He did. You brainwashed and kidnapped a woman who rejected you. He was going to take her away from me. You could have respected her wishes. I'd have killed her first! It's a great episode not just for the issues it raises, but also for the fact that all of your favorite villains are in the same room. And the conclusion that the villains come to shows us once again why we love these villains and why they're so friggin' interesting to watch. It's a great idea executed perfectly. The visuals are strong, the lighting is stylish, and it's just so awesome to see all your favorite baddies share the screen together. It's also great to see the DA go through her own story arc and come to her own unique conclusion while trying to juggle staying alive in a building of crazies. It's like a trial in Wonderland. You know, it feels done right. Trying to play to the sanity and order with a world that has little to none. Abidi, 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 that's all, folks. Number two. Baby Doll. Many of you might remember my crossover review with CR on familiar faces with this episode, so you can probably get much more information about it there. But once again, it's an episode that is seriously overlooked. It's about an actress from a sitcom who has a rare disease that keeps her from growing taller. She was born with systemic hypoplasia, a rare condition that kept her from aging. Would you believe she was 20 years old in that clip? Crushed by the fact that her career never went anywhere, she becomes deranged and psychologically obsessed with getting the cast back together and staying in her fictional sitcom world. Mary Doll? Is this a joke? No, sillies. I'm baby member. Together again, forever and ever. Well, this sounds like a funny scenario, and they do point out the silliness of it quite often. It still keeps us grounded in what's causing it. It addresses the pain that our villain is going through, both with the prejudices of being a little person and being a celebrity, especially an out-of-work celebrity, to a point where you actually feel bad you were laughing at her in earlier scenes. They also acknowledge that she made mistakes that isolated her from her friends, and that she feels there's no other place they'll accept her anymore except in her own demented imagination. It was harmful me out there. I studied and trained and auditioned, but no one wanted me. Over the years, I remembered how happy I was with all of you around me and the folks at home watching me each week. Me. Baby doll. <laughs> they really dive into what it means to make mistakes, adjusting to them, and having to live with the changes in your identity. Like many great Batman villains, she comes off as being creepy, intimidating, and also kind of funny. But it's the third act that really becomes the emotional tearjerker. I won't give too much away here, but let's just say it's one of the most heartbreaking moments in the Batman series. And given the lineup that we've had on the show, that's saying a lot. Why couldn't you just let me make believe? It's a great episode with a great villain and a great ending. It's easily among one of the best. Number one best Batman the Animated Series episode is... Almost Got Him. This is just a perfect episode. The setup, what can I say? It's incredible. The Joker, the Penguin, Two-Face, Poison Ivy, and Croc are all playing poker together. That image alone is fantastic. But it gets interesting when they start betting on who's come the closest to killing off Batman. I've come the closest. Are you kidding? I was the one who nearly... Nobody's come closer to snuffing the Batman than me. The fact of the matter is we each have an almost Gotham Batman story. I know mine's the best, but let's hear yours anyway. So each one tells their tale about how they almost got it. The stories are creative, the action is strong, and the ways they've almost done him in actually are pretty damn entertaining. But it's the interaction off one another that really makes this one the best. Half of me wants to strangle you. And what does the other half want? To hit you with a truck. We used to date. Ah. It's not sad, it's not tragic, it's not even really that dark. It's just the villains chilling out being the villains. And you know what? 
That's pretty fucking cool. Most people realize that the strength of Batman comes half from him and half from his opponents. So the more real and identifiable they are, the more drawn in we become. This is the episode where the villains seem the most human. They're not up to anything, they're not planning any evil schemes, they're just playing cards. It's actually nice to see them just relax and be themselves. And the dialogues they have are just great, including one of the funniest moments in any of the shows. Anyone else want to go? <laughs> there I was, holed up in this quarry, when Batman came nosing around. And? I threw a rock at him! It was a big rock. It's also the first time the show had five of the major villains in one room. This would be upstaged later with the trial episode, but for the time, this was pretty friggin' awesome that we saw this. It's sort of like when all the villains got together in the Batman movie. It's just so cool to see them working off each other. The writing is great, the animation is great, the stories are great, and it even builds up to a bit of a twist at the end, to show that the episode actually did serve a purpose outside of just seeing the bad guys shoot the shit. But like I said, it's the interaction of the bad guys that makes it so perfect. The way they work off each other and even poke fun at each other's flaws. Prepare to meet your end within my aviary of doom. Aviary of what? Yeesh, Pengus. How corny can you get? Fa. It's just an awesome episode, and it makes these characters seem surprisingly much more three-dimensional than if there was an entire episode dedicated to one of them. It's just everybody doing what they do and doing it at their best. It's an absolutely perfect episode. Hmm, almost got him. And those are my top 11 Batman the Animated Series episodes, one of the greatest shows of all time. Now, for those of you who didn't see your favorite episodes on the list, here's my runners-up. There you go. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remembered, so you don't have to. It was a big rock.